I just got back from a walk and now I'm trying to figure out what to do with the sleeves. So if I want it to be like this, the four squares, I need to sew them together. But then on both sides, I'm going to need to add width so then I can better connect it with my top and back panels. So let me grab my measuring tool. Let's see, the hole is right there. So three inches up front, three inches in the back. So that'll be three rows of double crochets. Um, so let's work on that. Okay, so I got one of my sleeves um, sewn together. I got the ends woven in as well. So I'm just going to fully make one sleeve first and see how that fits before doing both of them and then realizing in the end that like I have to redo the whole thing. So if you're doing like patchwork like me, make sure you know like what size is going to be on the top front or in the back. So for me, this is going to be on my right sleeve. I'll have the white showing from the front top. So what I'm going to do now is add three rows of double crochets on this end as well as this end and then connect them, add the ribbing, and then connect it to my body of the vest. <laughs> Can't talk yet. Yeah, because that's not working. It's 444. I just connected my yarn to my skein, a new skein of yarn. And this is what I have left of my white yarn. See, I was like getting ready to make a lot more um, da daisy crochet, daisy granny squares, but I'm gonna undo these and use up the yarn as much as I can. Um, hopefully I'll have enough to make the sleeves my left sleeve um, the extension width. So I just finished adding width to the front of the sleeve but if you can see if I have it starting from the top of the crochet square granny square on both ends I'm still missing a chunk so it looks like I need to double it and do two more Or three more. I think I need to do three more. Two or three more rows of double crochet granny squares. Ah, but it's looking cute. So cute. So we have this lined up. I think I've made enough for the back part to connect. Honestly, it, I don't know how to count these rows. I think I did... Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe? Seven rows of double crochet on the back for mine. And then the front, uh, I did less because it didn't have the extra. So I think I did one, two, three, four, five in the front. So what I'm going to do is flip this inside out. And flip this inside out and then start invisible joining all the way across and then once we got that done I'm gonna invisible join this almost done with the sleeve and then we need to do the trim for the wrist this is gonna be like a fat balloon sleeve was not planning on that but it is what it is Okay, so of course this isn't an exact science, so for some parts I skipped the loop to make it tighter so at least like in the ends like the shoulder seams would meet and whatnot, but I've gone around and now I'm, thankfully I have enough yarn, so then now I'll connect um, these bottoms together. I'm sewing these sleeves together, but the back is a lot longer than the front so for the rest of the these 
I'm going to skip some loops in the back so at least we can get the ends to meet at the right place. So it's looking like this right now. So we're going in the outer loop. I'm going to skip one loop. I'm also going to skip another loop here and then go back in. Okay, and then skip a loop. I don't know if I skipped a loop. Skip one here and hit my last loop. Boom! We made it work, but I don't know how these sleeves are going to look like on. Oh my god. Okay. sleeve get out of here oh my gosh this is what it looks like let me take this off check this out Okay, now I need to make the ribbing, and we'll see how that turns out. This is so cute! Ah! Now we need to decrease um, the armhole. So in the video, she did double decrease. Um, but we're going to try to go for a triple, because look how big this sleeve is. I bet you this fits my head. Look at that. <laughs> it's so silly. Um, I don't even know if a triple decrease is even a thing, but we're going to find out. So this is what the sleeve is looking like. I'm going to insert my slip knot, pull through, and chain two, and that doesn't count as a stitch. Bear with me because I don't even, I've never done this before either. So, thank you. Do a double crochet decrease. So, we're going to try to do a triple crochet decrease. The double crochet decrease, she looped one, went through both the front and back stitch, yarn over, loop another. I don't know what I'm, why I'm pretending like I know what I'm doing. Pull through two loops. Pull through two loops. Yarn over. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. You should now have three loops left on your hook. So we did a double, now we're going to go through another loop, eek, yarn over, go through two, now we have four loops and then now we're going to pull through all four of them. Alright, let's see how this works. Um, yarn over, go through a loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go through the next loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then we're going to go another one, yarn over, go through a loop, pull through, yarn over, go through two, we have four left. All right, it's definitely causing a decrease, so hey, I might be onto something. And all you seasoned crocheters are probably like, duh, that's how you do a triple, double crochet, a, a triple crochet decrease. Like, come on now, where you've been living under a rock or something? <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like crocheters are really nice. So I want to join the club. I think these triple decreases worked, you guys. Yikes, it looks like this is already falling off on the top. I might have to redo this. But, okay. Do a quick try on. Leave. Ah, look at it. And then I've changed seven, and it looks like it'll be perfect on my wrist for chain seven. I might make it eight. 
works actually. It's on my wrist. Uh, I'll just keep it. And then what we're gonna do is slip stitch, slip stitch on the back loop only. What does that mean? I don't know. But we'll figure it out. Bro, these cuffs are not it. They're like taking forever to do. I can't find the back loop or it's just like really hard to dig it up. And honestly, I don't think it's worth my time to try to like do that. Let me see if I can just leave. Like, would it be weird if I just left my sleeve like that? Hmm. Or like, would that be weird? Just be like a short jacket? Would that be weird? Okay, so the game plan now is I'm going to try to create the cuffed ribbing separately and then sew it on. I am so frustrated with this ribbed cuff, you guys. Like, it's not coming out right. It's such a pain trying to find the back loop, but it looks like all these like rib cuffs are back loops. I'm going to try another way and just do it on the sleeve. Um, but this time I'm going to try doing single crochets to the back loop and hopefully that helps me fill out the cuff faster than the um, slip stitch in the back loop only. <sighs> I don't know why, but it's just so much easier to single crochet into the back loops only. Look at this, I've gotten some progress here. And then to make it more of like a cinched balloon sleeve look, whenever I attach to my sleeve, I'll do a slip stitch to attach it and then I'll skip a loop and then slip stitch again and then start turn my work and start it again. So you can see that it's kind of like coming in. So I'm a little bit worried that it might be too tiny. Um, who knows? But I'm very happy that I'm finally getting some progress on the ribbing. So sometimes you just gotta try different methods, find what works, and yeah. So we're doing another row down to the sleeve. I'm going into, I mean, I'm just going to be talking, can't really see, but back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, so that's single crochet, back loop only, pull through, pull through both, I, I feel like now I think I jinxed myself and I'm like doing it wrong, just kidding. So now I'm like, I actually have a groove when it was like so hard to find the, um, the back loop, I think if you just do like a slip stitch to the back loop, it's just harder to find. And I know I struggled with turning my work. Because um, I kept turning it the wrong way, thinking it was just like a mess. So I'm like watching the video and re-watching to make sure I'm like turning it the right way. But I think I got the hang of it now. Sorry if you're here to actually watch a tutorial. This is definitely more of a vlog because I'm just trying to figure things out if you can't tell. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys for being here and supporting this channel. Um, maybe in the future I'll actually do a, a real tutorial video of this. Oh my gosh. I just finished doing the ribbing and it looks so tiny. <laughs> I haven't slips I haven't sewn it in yet, so let's do a try on. Oh my gosh. Uh. Okay. So my wrist still fits through. 
my arm, my forearms. It's a bit tight. I don't know if this cuff will wrap around. It looks like it might, but it might be very tight. Oh my god, I think it will I think it'll be okay. I think it will be okay. It'll just be a bit tight, but <laughs> I think we can make it work. Okay. <sighs> I'm nervous. Oh my gosh, it is tight. Look at that! <laughs> Yo, we did it, y'all. We did it! But we have a whole other side to do, and a lot more. <laughs> I think that's it for today, and then we'll catch back up tomorrow.